Welcome back to Long Island Viewpoint. I'm Ken Rosato. Did you know that allergies cost an estimated $700 million a year in lost productivity? And that's just in the USA. The problem often starts early in life and is more common than we realize. With us today, board-certified allergist Dr. Atul Shah, who is also a best-selling author of the book Allergies and Awesome You. Thanks so much for being with us, Doctor. Okay, thank you for having me. So tell us, what are allergies? What are they? Allergies is simply an overactive immune response to harmless substance. For example, if there's a tree pollen that will trigger overactive response, it's an allergy to tree pollen. So we were talking about this uh, during the break just now. Um, sometimes the traditional thought of what an allergy is and what the trigger is uh, is a little different now. The thought, uh, we used to think that if you were allergic to carrots, for instance, that it was the carrot that you were allergic to. Now it could be that you're allergic to, what, birch tree pollen, right? That's and correct. that if you're inhaling birch tree pollen certain times of the year, that that hypersensitizes you to the carrot? Is that the case? That's correct. It's called cross-reactivity and the condition is called oral allergy syndrome where the allergy to birch tree pollen will trigger symptoms to fresh fruits including the apple carrots and all that and we were even talking about some people who might be allergic to shrimp could that could be triggered because of dust mites if they, someone has dust mite allergy their reaction to shellfish could be more violent so that doesn't mean that they're not allergic to shellfish, but what might otherwise be just a little itch in the mouth could all of a sudden become, what, inflamed lips and an itchy throat or something more, like that? More pronounced, and it also can trigger anaphylaxis, which can be a life-threatening reaction. That's amazing. Now, I uh, uh, must admit, I have and just recently diagnosed with food allergies uh, about six months ago. Uh, the partner I work with in news here, Lori Stokes, has food allergies, tree nut allergies. I have uh, tomatillo allergies, I found out, uh, eating a salsa at a Mexican restaurant not long ago. Uh, and my dad has um, shellfish allergies. So uh, it, does it run in families, uh, typically? It, it's a combination. So you have to have some genes that are prone to develop allergy, but you need to have exposure. So it's a combination of uh, genes and the environment that triggers the allergy symptoms. Now, is it very common in, in people? It's very common. 20% of the U.S. population has some allergy. And in children, it's almost 40% meaning two out of every five children you meet will have some form of allergies. Talk about the five steps of allergies. Five basic steps. One is to recognize that you have allergies. So that's something through the diary or through the symptoms. Second is to identify the trigger. Mm -hmm. So if you know what uh, might be triggering the allergy, you can get tested through the skin or the blood. Third step would be to avoid what you're allergic to, to reduce or minimize the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Fourth step would be to do things to control the symptoms, which can be with or without medication. And the last step, last step is to develop tolerance through allergy vaccination, or we call immunotherapy. And this is the third leading medical, chronic medical condition for children? Absolutely. That is huge. It's huge. So this causes kids to miss school, adults to miss work. This is a serious problem. Yeah. And as you said, it's $700 million worth of lost productivity per year just in the U.S. alone. So now how do we treat allergies? Ideally, once you recognize, you identify what causes allergy, you try to avoid to the extent you can, use the medication to control the symptoms, and you can get vaccinated or get immunotherapy to overcome sensitization to allergens. Like, for instance, I have uh, allergy to tomatillo, for instance, and who knew I had allergy? Maybe because I never ate tomatillo on a regular basis. Now I know I can't have it in certain foods. So what can I do about that? Can I, do, I, do I eat little bits of it to try to sensitize myself to it? Or what do I no. do so that I that don't react? It's still in works, so we don't recommend trying any food that you're allergic to because there's a potential for a life-threatening reaction. So you must avoid the food that you're allergic to. Science will reach a point in a few years where we may be able to do that through science, through a specific schedule. But at this point, only treatment for food allergy is to avoid, avoid, avoid. You also can carry self-injectable epinephrine and Benadryl-like medications so yeah. that if there's a reaction, you can take care of it right away. And what are you doing now for education? You have a website. Talk about that. Uh, I'm also an author for children's book, so the website I have is called amazingallergist.com. Mm -hmm. And through that website, we are trying to educate children and adults with allergy how to reduce the allergen exposure and what can be done. 
also American College of Allergy and American Academy of Allergy have their websites and they're very good sources for information. I mean, this is really important stuff because people just commonly think of a little sneeze or blowing your nose, but we're talking about anaphylaxis where you could potentially stop breathing if your lungs swell up. Talk about anaphylaxis for people who don't understand what that is. That's correct. Food allergy is responsible for severe anaphylaxis where people die from uh, anaphylactic type of reaction. So initial symptoms can be hives, lip swelling, throat swelling, difficulty breathing, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath. And if it's severe enough, blood pressure can drop and someone can go and get into shock. Mm -hmm. At that point, the easiest way to overcome that is by injecting self-injector epinephrine that will reverse the reaction and you get to the medical facility at the earliest. Uh, we call them the EpiPen. That's the epinephrine. That's a little self-injecting pen. You just stick it in your leg, takes that's a second, that, doesn't that, hurt and it works relatively quickly, but for people who don't realize, that's not the cure. That only gives you, buys you about 15 minutes to get you to a hospital. No, that's correct, that's correct. So okay. there are other companies who have products like EpiPen, and that's why we call epinephrine self-injector. And once you inject, you still need to call EMS and get to the medical hospital, medical facility right away. And what other measures help your life quality if you have allergies? Avoiding what you're allergic to, for example, if someone has dust mite allergy, something as simple as getting special cover for the mattress and the pillows with the zipper will reduce your exposure to dust mites if and someone has... What I was even going to say, something as simple as rinsing out your nasal passages morning and night with a saline wash. Very simple thing, but that could, just the, the pollen in the air, when you see that the, the yellow coating on your car, that stuff is in your nasal passages and, and your hair as well, correct? That's correct. So anybody who has a pollen allergy, when they spend time outdoors, when they come in, they must take a shower, change the clothes, wash the hair, and also they can do saline wash that cleans the nose, sinuses, and same thing can be done for the eyes. With about 30 seconds left, Doc, really fast, if you have to go to be scratch tested at the allergist, it doesn't hurt. I've had it done myself. Doesn't hurt. That's correct. Now the science has reached a point that testing can be done without needles. That's right. It's a little tiny plastic thing. They touch your skin. Kids and adults, don't worry about it. You don't feel a thing. I had about 10 or 15 on my skin. I promise you, it's like somebody touching you with a fingertip. It takes a second and it doesn't hurt. Dr. Shah, thank you so much for being here. And uh, the book is uh, out there. Tell everybody the name of it again, Allergies and Awesome You. It's Allergies and Awesome You. Believe you can get there, too. Terrific. Thank you, Doctor, for being with us today. I'm Ken Rosado. We thank you again for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.